Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with a very interesting device. It actually took me six months to get out of MFJ. They, they were out of production. They had to get more parts and so on. And this is a voltage conditioner. And I guess that must mean that somewhere you can get some voltage shampoo to go with it. It's the MFJ4403. It's a very interesting device and extremely simple. So let's take a look inside. I want you to see what's inside here. Before we take a look at this very interesting device, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Mark Barkmeyer. He is one of my new patrons that has just joined by supporting the channel. You too can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. And thank you for your support. Mark, I really appreciate it. Now let's take a look at it. Uh, it's only two screws holding off the, the top here. We'll take this one out. Now note that this does not void the warranty. If you take something, if something breaks and you try to fix it, that does not void the warranty for MFJ products. They're, they recognize they're dealing with hams who know how to fix things and so on. Okay, now let's take a look inside and see what we've got. We have six capacitors. All right, a switch right there, which is just on and off, a big resistor, and a couple fuses. All right, a 25 amp fuse on the output, a 15 amp fuse on the input. There's a relay in here. And these are miracle electronic devices called supercapacitors. They have very, very high capacitance. But the problem is they'll only handle about two and a half volts each. These are multi-farad capacitors. Now, if you put a capacitor in series with another capacitor like this, and these are both value C, the capacitance through the whole thing is C over 2. So if this is a 4 farad capacitor and this is a 4 farad capacitor, the capacitance of the collection is 2 farads. Okay, now these are enormous in here and my eyesight won't let me see them very well. Um, see if we can get up here and take a look at what's on the side of it. No, we can't. They're multi-farad capacitors, and they're put in series in such a way that the total capacitance here is, I think, four farads, which is an enormous capacitance. Okay, now, um, so here's where this works, okay. These will only handle about two volts each. That's the problem with supercapacitors and, and how they can make them so small is they only hold two volts each. So you put six in series and you've got 12 volts. So maybe it's a few more than that. Anyway, here's how we use this. And I don't know why they've included this cord because this cord doesn't fit anything on here. But it was included and nice to have another power cord but these use anderson power poles so here is basically what is inside this box you've got input terminals output terminals okay this one goes through and this one goes in here to a giant capacitor four farads Okay, and out. And this goes to your power supply, and this goes to here. So here's what happens. You use a normal 
100 watt radio on single sideband or CW, and it wants to draw 20 amps, all right, but just for a second. Well, it starts to discharge this capacitor. And then between the lines while you're talking, your power supply can recharge the capacitor. So if you want, like, say, 22 amps out on a single sideband type use or CW or something like that, you won't bring the capacitor down on all of the bumps because you've got a lot of time when you're not using it. So if you can come up with 7 amps in, actually, or even less, depending on how you're using this, this will keep charging the capacitor while you're using it at quite a varying rate. Now, why is this important? This is important if you have a variable capacity generator over here. We are all familiar with the little two kilowatt generators made by Kawasaki, Honda, um, and Yamaha. I have one from Yamaha. They're two kilowatt. They're what are called inverter generators. What happens is there's DC in there that comes from the wild AC of the motor, which is converted to um, an intermediate voltage and it powers an inverter. Now, if you switch on a light, you'll hear the generator speed up to accommodate that additional load. If you switch off things, you'll hear the generator calm down because it doesn't have a very big load. But the electronics in the generator's inverter keeps it always 120 volts out, okay? Now, the QST years ago did a uh, review of four generators and found that if you use a generator in its inverter mode to power a power supply, typical uh, ham radio power supply and a typical ham radio, and you start talking, the load fluctuates wildly. And so the generator is trying to go up and down and up and down and up and down to follow it. And it can't. It can't keep up that fast. Enter this. If you put the input to this from your power supply, okay? So you've got your power supply plugged into the generator. And then you take this over to the rig. As you talk on the radio, it will gradually discharge these capacitors so the motor can come up and follow it and keep these charged from the other end. And then when you stop talking, the thing can slow down as it finishes charging up the capacitors. Now, what's cool about that is you can save a bunch of gasoline. Okay, you can save a bunch of gasoline. And it's a lot quieter around because... When you're in receive, this thing's hardly taking any current at all. So the inverter generator can go down to a very low speed, quite quiet. And then when you start transmitting, you seldom draw over 7 amps. So that's about 80 watts. And that's well within the range with these capacitors charging and discharging. Well within the range of what the generator can handle. Now, let's see how we operate this. Here's the front right here. It's got a warning for reverse polarity. And when you turn it on, it first puts this great big resistor in series with the 12 volts because you don't want to hammer these with the full voltage all at once. And so while it is charging, that yellow light is on. When you are ready to use it, the green light will come on, and then you can use your radio as you would normally. Now, you will come to find out that uh, if you disconnect your power supply, it'll take a while for this to discharge, okay? But there are no lethal voltages in here that you need to worry about. It's all 12 volt, but do remember not to short it because it is all 12 volt and quite a bit of energy is contained in these supercapacitors.
So here you have it, the voltage conditioner. Like I said, I ordered it and it took about two months to come. Let's just take it the peek at the MFJ website and see how much they cost. And we're going to look for the MFJ 4403, MFJ hyphen 4403. And it has just this one product right here. This also works, and it says mobile, if you want to use your cigarette lighter plug. Because if you're using single sideband or CW, which has interruptions in it, this will sel seldom draw more than 7 amps. And that is what uh, can keep those capacitors charged. Okay, so $179.95, $180. I know that's a bit pricey. Uh, but the reason that it is pricey is because of these super capacitors. They are extremely dense storage for energy. And you have to put them in series, and you'll see down here there's little resistors to equalize the charge among them and so on and all the different battery stuff, battery management that you need. So if you uh, find yourself out truck camping or trailer camping or something like that, and you've brought a generator along so you can run 100 watts, um, this is a really nifty little accessory because it allows you to use the eco mode, meaning a lot less noise and a lot longer uh, on the gasoline. In fact, it'll go down to Harley ticking over in receive mode. This is the thing you need to make that work. Otherwise, you have to run your generator in the non-inverter mode so that it can always have power ready for all those rapidly dancing peaks to feed your transmitter. But this allows you to use the inverter mode. Enough said. There you have it. This really cool little device. And like I said, it took me a while to get it because uh, hopefully they have more now uh, that you can get. So there you have it. Um, if you would like to help support this channel financially, go to decastlercom slash support um, and pick a method that works for you. Also, please subscribe. If you would like to send a question to me, please do. Send it, if you're a patron, send it via the patron message system. If uh, you are just want to do it via email, you can't do attachments in the patron uh, messaging system. So you can uh, send an email to AR, uh, I'm sorry, ask Dave, ask Dave, all one word, at ARRL.org. And you can put attachments, pictures, things like that in there, and then send that to me. And I will respond via email or by putting it in the Ask Dave column in the um, QST or by making a video about it. Okay, one of those. The other way you can get in touch with me if that doesn't work for you for whatever reason is to send snail mail to Dave Kassler, KE0OG, PO Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. Okay, so those are the three ways to get in touch with me. Um, I need to use my phone for personal kinds of things, so please respect my privacy in that regard. And please like, subscribe, and tell other people about the channel, and tell everybody about ham radio. And until we next meet, 73.